I don't think I'm going to get sleepy at all. Even though my baby sister is gone, they took a life, but not a voice. I am Rekia Boy. Rekia Boy! Say your name with me. Rekia Boy. We're boy. We're boy. We're boy. We're boy. We're boy. I love y'all. Thank you. Thank you, Martinez. Who will hold Rakia boy? We will. Who will hold Rakia boy? We will. Who will hold Rakia boy? We will. Say her name. Rakia boy. Say Say her name. Rakia Boy. Say her name. Rakia Boy. Say her name. Rakia Boy. We will not forget. Rakia Boy. Thank you. So we need to remember that our sisters are not just victims, right? The reason why we wanted, you to tell, we wanted to tell their stories is because we wanted you to know that they're not just victims of state violence. They were mothers and sisters and aunts and friends and lovers. And now they are ancestors. They are ancestors right now and they are watching over us. And to remember that and to bring that into this space right now, we're going to sing together. All right? Can we do that? Yes. So I'll share this with you, and then you can join in when you're ready. I know they're watching, ancestors watching. I know they're watching. I know, I know. I know they're watching, ancestors watching. I know they're watching. I know, I know. Sing. I know they're watching, ancestors watching. I know they're watching. I know, I know. Louder. They're watching, ancestors watching. I know they're watching. I know, I know. They need to hear you. Watching, ancestors watching. I know they're watching. I know, I know. I know they're watching, ancestors watching. I know they're watching. I know, I know. I know they're watching, ancestors watching. I know they're watching. I know, I know. I know, I know. I know, I know. I know, I know. Ashe, they are here with us. They are here with us. Never forget. Never forget. And they need your love and they need your energy. And they need you to be present right now. Are you with me? Yeah. Are you here? Yeah. All right. Next, coming to this age to honor our sisters. We have Cynthia Howell, who is the niece of Alberta Sproul, who will be joined by Micheline from Sadie Nash and And Penelope, thank you. Come on to the stage, Penelope. Good evening, everyone. So tonight, we are also honoring Alberta Sproul. Alberta Sproul worked at the City Division of Administrative Services. She was described by relatives and family and neighbors as hardworking and devout. Miss Sproul died of a heart attack after the police broke down her door at 6.10 a.m. and threw a concussion grenade into her apartment. The police were acting on misinformation about drugs and guns inside her apartment. Miss Sproul, who had a heart condition, died less than two hours later. Hello, everybody. I'm Cynthia Howell. Our brother is my aunt. And I want to talk about some things 
in brief, if I can, but I doubt very seriously, because this is some serious stuff that we got to deal with. I've been marching since Gavin Cato, even though not a police, even though not a police brutality case, used that Hawkins and some other folks, and then it landed in my backyard, now they got a problem to deal with, because I already had the marching shoes on beforehand. My family, remember Alberta School, is the only case that we can find that the police department as well as the mayor took responsibility for. I think they owe a whole lot more apologies than just one. The numbers don't add up to me. And I'm speaking on my aunt's behalf. Them numbers don't add up. And I'm here to say all cases matter. I don't care how new and I don't care how old. And I want everybody out here to know that the families in New York and across this country are united. We are 35 members strong thus far in New York City alone. Families United, the number four justice. We are trying to do things to connect with other families across the state across this country because we got work to do. All of them rep uh, politicians and courting artists and everybody that say to us during the time when we're going through, call us whenever you need us. That didn't come with an expiration date. Only the lives taken were expired. We are appealing to our people in power, our black folk in power to help the families. Without the families at the forefront of this movement, you really don't have a movement to stand on. It's about what has happened already. And we are fighting to keep these things from continuously happening. From going to Freddie Gray's funeral, me and some of the other families turned right around and went to Albany and demanded that Governor Cuomo have a meeting with us. And although he postponed it and postponed it, we ain't leaving. We stood right there. And we got that meeting. But then to find out that he feels that we ain't standing our ground on getting a special prosecutor enacted in the state of New York, he is truly wrong. Yeah. That has been fought many times before with the mother of Amadou Diallo and Iris Baez for her son Anthony Baez. And there has been no special prosecutor thus far. We gonna go back to Albany real soon and knock down his door again. And if it takes us waiting in his beautiful lavish lobby, we are going to do so. And next time he want to serve us some cookies and water, serve us what we want on a platter, which is the special prosecutor. Because that's what we came there for. I want to leave on one more note, because I don't want to monopolize the time. I said I was going to try to be brief, but sometimes things got to take a while. But if they don't hear us right about now, let them take their Obamacare and get their ears checked. And if they don't see us coming, let them take their Obamacare and get their eyes checked. And if they can't feel the movement that's going on across this country, I say the hell with Obamacare, go get your ass an enema and get rid of the BS that's up there.
Next, we have Sharon Wilkerson, who will be coming to honor Shelly Frey. We'll be joined by Rachel Gilmore, Gilman, and Delane Powerful from Black Youth Project 100. Shelly was the eldest of her siblings, her father Shelton's namesake. From the start, Shelly was a people person. Her dream was to open up beauty salons that served as one-stop shops, everything you needed from head to toe. She loved making women feel beautiful and good about themselves. Her calling was helping others. She was a loving mother of two young girls, Chastity and Cheris, the eldest of which takes after her mother's unique fashion sense. More than anything else, Shelly was utterly devoted to her family. On December 6, 2012, Shelly and two other women were in a Walmart. The security guard, an off-duty Houston police officer, approached them after someone reported that they had seen one of the other girls stuff something into their purse. The officer followed them out to their car, when he attempted to prevent the driver from getting into the driver's seat. Instead of shooting at the tires, he fired his gun into the vehicle, full of five unarmed people, two of which were children. He missed the driver and hit Shelly, who was sitting in the passenger seat, in the head and the neck. When the police came, they apprehended the driver but ignored Shelly's request for medical attention. Shelly sat in that car, waiting for paramedics for over eight hours. She did not have to die. Shelly wasn't just my daughter, she was my friend. She left behind two beautiful girls, one with Chef Sickle Cell. She left behind two sisters, a niece that was supposed to have been born in January, and we was excited about the baby coming. The baby didn't get to see her auntie. What I'm looking for is justice. We have to come together and we have to stand for the black women today. We have to not just let them sweep it under the rug. You heard about Shelly maybe a week and after that week you didn't hear any more about it. And I'm thankful to God for the African organization coming together and contacted me to come out to be a part, to be a blessing to help somebody else that's going through what we're going through that we can help them not to make the same mistakes. That God would also deal with the law enforcement. Lord, that they will be equipped to know how to handle different situations and not be quick to pull a trigger. Because they let them tell that they always fear for their life. Why did you take that job? If you didn't have a heart for the people, why would you take that job? It's about money. It's about getting paid. It's about being seen. It's not about that because we lost our family members. And I always wanted to ask them, how would it feel if the shoe was on the other foot? How would you handle it? You would feel the same way we're feeling today. Hurt. Can, what can I tell my grandkids about their mother? The five-year-old asked her sister, the nine-year-old, when is mama coming to pick us up? What do you tell that child? They don't have the answer. And, but they get set free because the first thing they said, I was fearing for my life. That's a lie. You mean every time you stop somebody, you fear for your life? And these young ladies didn't have a weapon. Then they had two children in the car. So that goes to show you, you didn't have a heart. He did not have a heart when he fired that gun. Then he lied and said he fired one time. When I got the autopsy report, it was two times. Now who's lying? Thank you. Breathe, everyone. 
inhaling the breath. Say her name. Shelly Fred. Say her name. Shelly Fred. Say her name. Shelly Fred. Who will hold Shelly Fred? We will. 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 Say her name. Shelly Fred. Say her name. Shelly Fred. Say her name. Shelly Fred. We will not forget. Thank you. Next, we want to welcome Natasha Duncan, sister of Chantel Davis, who will be joined by Carmen Perez of Justice League and Naima Johnson of Black Women's Blueprint. Please welcome us to the stage. Chantal Davis was born on May 26, 1989, at Kings County Hospital. She would have been 26 this upcoming Tuesday. Chantal was a loving and respectable young woman who loved life and enjoyed her own to the fullest. She had a smile as bright as a day and, as, and a warm embrace. Chantal adored animals, loved cooking, and was a missionary. During the first 17 years of her life, Chantal devoted, devoted her Sundays to the thriving temple of God in Christ, attended Sunday school, became the church Sunday school secretary, and joined the thriving temple's junior choir. She cared for the elderly, sick, and disabled. She had strength of character, came from a loving family, and was kind-hearted. She was generous and had an enormous heart. That was the kind of person Chantal was. Chantal was a beautiful woman with a great promise. 